Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. You know, in a recent video I had and remarked that uh, I was basically done with plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, basically range extended uh, EVs, and I mentioned that I thought that they were uh, somewhat um, niche or, or narrow use case and for most people their needs would be better served by basically an all electric for most of their use cases right uh, and it's really just a very narrow uh, set of use cases where a plug-in hybrid electric makes sense and you know some people pushed back on that and some asked me to maybe do a video of a response and why I think the way that I do now for me personally that's purely a subjective assessment. I know from my personal use case that a plug-in hybrid electric just doesn't work. It would need to have 150 uh, plus miles of range before it would really make sense and that at that point you really do have to ask why am I carrying a gasoline range extender when I could just basically double the battery capacity and be done with it and have a 300 mile EV? So, um, but that's a very subjective uh, assessment. So I wanted to give maybe a little bit more of an, uh, my objective reasonings. And again, though, there are going to be personal individual circumstances where a plug-in hybrid maybe makes the most sense of any vehicle and uh, before I even dive into this there's there's a valid argument to be made for a pure hybrid right if you're someone who's regularly driving three four five six hundred miles all the time no place to plug in anything like that then maybe just a basic hybrid is a better choice. It, you know, it's cheaper, easier to get into, and you know, by the time you match cost of ownership with an EV, maybe there will be an EV that meets your needs. But I don't want to really talk about those corner cases because we always hear it. People are very vocal when their corner case isn't addressed. So I wanted to look at some actual data. And and there's not a lot and this isn't by no means a thorough investigation or research, but um, one of the articles that jumped out to me was uh, something that Nikki Gordon Bloomfield from Transport Evolved, she wrote when she was uh, writing for Green Car Reports. And at the time, you know, she was citing a report that said, "Hey, electric cars could cover most people's driving needs most of the time. I, I think it was over 90%. Uh, some of the numbers that stood, stood out were, uh, you know, the average uh, trip distance, right? And there was a, a distinction between urban uh, and rural drivers, which is one of the areas where I hear people making the case for, you know, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. But in the case of urban drivers, right, they were averaging 36.5 miles per trip. Whereas in the case of rural drivers, they were averaging 48.6 miles per trip. So significantly longer for the rural drivers, but still under 50 miles. So pure electrics from back then could cover those needs. Uh, and, you know, even plug-in hybrids, right, could basically be run almost solely on electricity. I, I don't want to question right the the study, but I started to look at it, and it was written from the perspective of justifying electric vehicles. So I'm I'm not going to say that they're you know changing the numbers or manipulating them, but I personally don't trust that source as much because they're going in with the purpose of saying, hey, I think electric vehicles are better. This is why. I'm not saying they did any sort of overt selection bias, but something like that makes me a little bit reluctant to rely on them, you know, for this type of assessment, uh, this type of critical uh, look at what's actually necessary. That kind of led me to a Bureau of Transportation Statistics website. Again, some of these numbers are dated, but in this particular case, that might actually be better because it predates electric vehicles really even being part of the mainstream dialogue, let alone right being available or widely available. And, and so this was back around 2000, and they were assessing long trips that 
you know, Americans make outside of their daily driving because we have a lot of data that shows, yeah, the average American only drives about 40 miles a day daily. So what they were looking at was long trips and personal vehicles are used or at least were used in, over the course of the year for about 2.3 billion long trips. This goes beyond their sort of daily routine, right? And it was a total of 760 billion miles uh, for all of those trips over the years. So that means that these trips were averaging, and this is when you're using your personal vehicle, 330 miles per trip. And 330 miles, you might point and say, aha, see, an electric vehicle, most electric vehicles can't go 330 miles. True, but that was round trip. And also, that was the average trip distance. However, the median long trip was 194 miles round trip. Now, that's well within the Chevy Bolt EV's range without even plugging in overnight. And again, that's the important thing about electric vehicles is you typically can charge them at their destination. This is not something that you can do with an internal combustion engine vehicle where you're staying at a relative's house, you park in the garage, plug into the wall socket or a dryer socket, you don't need to worry about your car the entire weekend you're visiting, and you head back with a full battery. You don't do that with a gas car, you can't. That's something that, that works in favor of something like an electric vehicle. And again, though, these are the hard numbers, right? This isn't some subjective assessment about how much I personally drive versus how much someone else personally drives. These are sort of anonymous statistics that we can look to and say, hey, hey look, no, for 90% of the people, even when they do take long trips, a plug-in hybrid electric really isn't necessary. And, and I needed to emphasize that point about charging at a destination too because part of the reason people say a plug-in hybrid electric is necessary is because of the lack of the public charging infrastructure. Public charging infrastructure isn't really an issue. It depends on how much time you have. But there are more places to plug in an electric vehicle than there are gas pumps in this country. So whether you're going on a camping trip and you stop at an RV park with a 240 volt plug or you stop at a motel or any of these other things, or like I said, a relative's house, you're more than likely going to be able to charge. You're not as reliant on the public charging infrastructure. This fast charging infrastructure just isn't necessary to make a 200 mile round trip in most modern EVs. So I, I think that's an important point to emphasize. And also again, I, I realize there's another really good data point that we have because I remember seeing this when I was comparing my personal use case versus other owners, is there's a site called Bolt Stats or Volt Stats. And that website actually tra tracks usage through OnStar reporting. And so if you bring up something like the Chevy Bolt EV page for that, it shows you how many trips are over a certain distance. And it only goes up to 200 miles, which is about perfect for the Bolt EV because that's really its single charge range. That's how far you can drive without ever needing the public charging infrastructure. Well, if you look at that chart, you're talking fractions of a percent of trips are even over 100 miles in a day, right? And so when you start to assess that, you're like, wow, this data actually matches up with that BTS data. And you say, well, but people got the Bolt EV because it meets their needs, other people drive farther. Well, the great thing about Bolt EV stats is there's also a Volt stats, and it can tell you how far the average Volt driver drives on a day. And when you look at the chart and compare Bolt EV drivers versus Volt drivers, it's roughly the same. So they're driving their vehicles in the same exact way. The only difference is one of them is using fossil fuels in the engine of the car and the other one isn't. So it's telling me that for the most part, those Volt owners could exchange their cars with a Bolt EV, a pure battery electric with a Bolt EV's range and they'd never notice the difference. So this is kind of getting to my point. These are all sort of the data points that 
are driving my position that I think plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are just not really necessary at this point. Um, it's better to transition to pure electric, use the cost, the complication, the, the size, the weight. Um, use all of that, you know, get rid of it, decrease the weight of the car, add batteries, increase the efficiency and then work on things like the charging speed and the infrastructure on those rare occasions when you do need a quote unquote range extender you can just use a public fast charger as your range extender um, but the case is really narrowing where uh, plug-in hybrid electrics are are a necessity um, and, and really I, I think that time maybe is already gone so I'd love to hear what you think I mean I know I'm sure people are going to still disagree with me on this but those are some of the numbers I was able to dig up I mean you feel free to share other numbers or counterpoints um, I'm not hard in my position but like I said uh, you know your personal needs might not align with what the greater population's needs are. Um, and so I'm just trying to take a sort of very uh, objective approach and a, an objective position. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.